After studying this module, you should be able to understand the theoretical debates and dialogues relating to death, perception and preparation of death according to different religions, the critical review of various theories of grief. Death is a universal phenomenon. Life is followed by death, which is again followed by life. Such a cycle is observed in all living beings, whether it is humans, animals, birds, mammals, plants. Even in case of stars in the universe, many stars die and many new stars get formed as we talk. Despite of the classical nature of death, we find it difficult to wrap the concept clearly around our heads. We have a vague understanding and a high level of curiosity regarding death. Death, in simplest terms, could be understood as the stopping of all biological functions which sustain a living organism. Living beings' bodies start to decompose shortly after death. Many things bring about death. They could be aging, predation, malnutrition, suicide, disease, trauma, leading to terminal injury, etc. The fact that we as humans are aware of our death gives our experience a temporal dimension and implicitly and explicitly shapes our lives into a developmental lifespan. Death results in the termination of a person's subjective narrative also, giving space to nothingness or non-being. This kind of a realization results in anxiety. To cope with such kind of anxiety, ontological and existential issues, humans since time immemorial have turned to religion, philosophy, culture, literature, medicine, etc. In the United States, the Uniform Determination of Death Act states that irreversible cessation of circulatory and respiratory functions or irreversible cessation of functions of the entire brain include the brain stem. These criteria are determined by medical professionals. Death also means the passing or ending of something such as a relationship or a cultural movement, for example, death of the hippie culture. The impact of such a termination can be huge on a person if he derived a part of his or her self-concept through whatever that ended. Let's look at the traditional debates regarding death. In order to understand death and human experience of it, two important theoretical bases have emerged. They are Freud psychoanalytical theory and existential theory. Freud believed that death was a manifest of a much deeper fear and was not in itself a primary human concern. The deeper fear that he referred to could be for example castration anxiety. In his later theories, Freud expanded his ideas to explain the destruction that occurred during the World War I. He formulated the concept of Thanatos or death instinct, which is the opposite of Eros or the life instinct. These two drives are intertwined within a person and are in constant conflict, thus making the person's manifest expression subject to either of these forces. Existential theorists believe that death is the main and primary concern of human beings. Existentialist Heidegger held that the temporal dimension of death orients our existence as being towards death. Each individual or Dacian, according to Heidegger, is being towards death. Therefore, every action is situated in and is a part of a larger contextual pathway which is directed towards and finalized by death. Death is thus the end of Dacian's possibilities. Death also threatens a person with non-existential and ironically gives a person a fuller and more authentic apprehension of life. Death presents a paradox of knowing the inevitable 
and well as of not knowing when and where it will happen. In the book The Denial of Death, anthropologist Becker engaged both Freud and existentialist thinkers, especially Kierkegaard and Otto Rank, and made us understand that humans use civilization for death denying purposes. According to him, cultures, religions, social groups, etc., offer value systems that help people to avoid death anxiety. Psychiatrist J. Lifton introduced the concept of symbolic immortality, which he defined as our ongoing seeking out of different biological and socio-cultural ways to ensure that we leave a mark on the world which remains there even after we physically die. Becker's and Lipton's writings gave birth to a paradigm in social psychology called terror management theory that is concerned with human mortality in sight of human behavior and cognition according to Greenberg 2004. Many studies have shown that when one's death becomes salient, the person tends to uphold and enforce deep, meaningful symbols of their culture or religious backgrounds and rely on intimate attachment relationship with death. However, debates still exist on many issues regarding death. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross in 1969 gave the stages of grief in her book on death and dying. The stages are denial. Denial is a conscious or unconscious refusal to accept facts, information, reality, etc. relating to the situation concerned. It's a defense mechanism and perfectly natural. It is easy for people to become stuck at this stage when dealing with traumatic events. Secondly, anger. Anger can manifest in different ways. People de dealing with emotional upset can be angry with themselves and or with others, especially those close to them. Anger can also be expressed towards the diseased. Bargaining. The th Traditionally, the bargaining stage for people facing death can involve attempting to bargain with whatever God the person believes in. Bargaining rarely provides a sustainable solution, especially if it's a matter of life or death. Depression. This stage is characterized by feeling of sadness and regret, fear, uncertainty, etc. This is an indication that the person has at least begun to accept the reality of the loss. The fourth point is acceptance. This stage symbolizes emotional detachment and objectivity. The grieving individual is becoming to come to terms with their loss. The bereaved make an effort to move on with life. Research has also shown that these stages are not universal. One of the biggest critics, Bonanno, rejects these stages as being universal and maintains that it is possible there isn't any stage of depression or grief due to presence of resilience, positive social support and socio-cultural variables. A major area of interest of many religious and cultural groups is regarding human consciousness after physical death. Many religious and cultural groups have a theory regarding the conception of afterlife or that of our soul transcending mortal life after death. Reports of near-death experience have supported a few beliefs regarding consciousness and transcends physical life, but naturalistic and neurobiological approaches have provided alternative solutions to explain the phenomenon of NDE, thus casting scientific doubt on afterlife. Critical debates on death. Death anxiety is extensively studied 
and is a major part of existential school of thought. In this point of view, psychopathological presentations are viewed as compensatory expressions of coping with precarious or destabilizing deeper and strongly held mortality issues. However, many psychotherapists do not deal with death anxiety, claiming that it is irrelevant in psychotherapy. However, Irwin Yalom maintains that even though it isn't explicitly spoken about, it still remains an underlying theme and gets manifested in our everyday choices, fears and sense of responsibility. In the situation of grief counselling, especially one can see that while the person is dealing with the loss of a loved one, he or she is also dealing with one's own issues related to his or her mortality and death of self. Camus stated that the only real philosophical question is whether or not to die. In today's day and age, the right to die has many related legal, social and moral issues surrounding it. The main issue is regarding passive versus active means of dying, that is where to morally draw the line between intentionally allowing a disease process to result in death and intentionally causing death through an outside means such as pharmaceuticals. Prado stated that in regards to medical care, each and every individual has a right to refuse or seize medical treatment and also due to the argument of self-determination ought to have the right to assisted suicide or voluntary euthanasia. Since the power of elective death is controlled by public medicine, politics and society, an individual is denied the deeply personal aspect of death. According to Meller and Schelling, structures which give meaning to our existence has been taken away from us due to modernity. An example would be the fact that many people do not believe in afterlife due to the dubious glance science cast at it. It isn't merely the dismissal of deeply meaningful religious rituals, but the reflexive destruction of public value systems, including ritualistic and bodily reference and practices, which is creating problems. Therefore, according to this viewpoint, people are free to construct meanings of their own and answer questions related to life and death. This brings about a sense of alienation, isolation, meaninglessness, anxiety and despair. According to Lee, modern society depends on public institutions like hospitals, life insurance policies, undertakers to handle the stages of the dying process. In Western cultures, avoidance and denial of death or signs of progression towards death manifest through the use of anti-aging creams and plastic surgery procedures. Another researcher Wong in 2010 stated that even though we are repelled by the idea of death, we are also at the same time fascinated by it as could be seen in the case of the wide appeal of violent video games. Privatization of war machines has changed the view of how death is perceived in our society. Death is now viewed as an industry. It appears as if death is commercialized for the purpose of economic gain and denial. Fascination with this topic and exploitation of human conflict has played a part in this process. There are ma many theories of grief. First is the one proposed by psychoanalysis. According to the psychoanalytical point of view, Freud believed that death frees the go from attachment to the diseased and allowed the individual to form new attachments. However, Silverman and Class refuted this view in 1996 and stated that Freud's theory was not based on selective use of data available to him 
and thus was not very generalizable. They even went on to state that there was a discrepancy in Freud's theories and his own experience of grief. Silverman and Class read Freud's letters and found out that he himself could not let go of old attachments and form new ones over the course of his bereavement. However, we should not completely dismiss the Freudian view, which is incredibly positive in the sense that it propagates a process of overcoming denial of loss and hence enriching the self. In the post-Freudian position, Klein posits an interesting viewpoint. In an article published in 1940, the case summary of Mrs. A was published. Mrs. A's son had died recently and her reactions were those of numbness and closing up of self, wishing to deny her loss. A dream pushed her to see her true feelings as well as disentangle this loss from death of her own brother experienced in childhood. She had another dream where she realized that her son's death made her fearful of her own. But ultimately she realized that she could and would go on living and could face her own death and felt freed from such entanglements. What one gets freed from is actually the projective identification we have attached with them. In order to appropriately relate to the deceased person, we need to re-own those parts attached to them. So Bowlby had proposed a theory called attachment theory and it's an attempt to revise the psychoanalytic theory given by Freud. This theory has played a huge role in developing an understanding about grief and loss. The antecedents of at attachment theory could be the theory proposed by Robertson which he formulated whilst he observed children's separation under stressful circumstances from their mothers. The stage theory thus formulated was a result of children responding with protest, despair and then denial. Bowlby replicated these stages in his theory and linked them with psychoanalytic theory. Thus, protest was linked to separation anxiety, despair to grief and mourning, and detachment to defense. He believed in the biological validity of psychological response of trauma. He's, Bowlby suggests that there are four general phases of mourning that include numbing, yearning, searching, disorganization, reorganization. Numbing is characterized by feelings of disbelief that the death has occurred, providing the grieving person with temporary relief from the pain associated with the loss. This usually lasts for a short period and is typically followed by emotional outbursts. Yearning and searching involves the realization of the loss when the numbness begins to fade away. Anger and frustration is common at this stage as the grieving individual is searching for someone to place the blame on. The disorganization phase involves accepting the reality of the loss along with the turmoil it brings. Evaluation of self without the deceased often occurs at this phase. The reorganization phase takes effect once the bereaved comes to a realization of a new life after the deceased. This phase is characterized by gradual changes as the bereaved attempts to move on with life. These phases occur one after the other and provide a blueprint for those who want to help someone who is grieving. According to Bowlby, there exists a capacity for healthy grieving. It is shaped by childhood experiences and to the extent to which attachment behavior has been regulated sympathetically. There is no a need to have a positive attachment experiences in order to feel secure about expressions of feelings. The Indian perspective on death and dying. According to Hinduism, death consists of a series of changes that an individual passes through. Brihadranyaka Upanishad states that when a soul passes over, 
life breath first follows it then the organs leave the body but then the soul acquires a new consciousness and seeks a body compatible with such a new kind of consciousness when it finds such a body it takes its support and enters it thus the hindu thought remains that soul is eternal and the body is transient a soul along with its past experiences knowledge works acquires a new body thus the concept of reincarnation is prevalent the concept of dying is often compared to falling asleep and after death experiences are seen as dreams thoughts and actions of our waking state determine the content of our dreams in the same way the actions performed in our lifetime determine the life after death experiences just as dreams are real to the person asleep after death experiences are also real to the death when the experience ends and the soul awakens it finds itself reincarnated in a new body so now in this module let's see what we have learned we looked at death from psychoanalytic point of view existential point of view from the view of attachment theories etc each view has a few suppositions and has specific perceptions about the phenomena of death and dying in the book the denial of death anthropologist pecker engaged both freud and existentialist thinkers especially kierkegaard and otto rank and made us understand that humans use civilization for death denying purposes according to him cultures religions social groups etc offer value systems that help people to avoid death anxiety according to the psychoanalytical point of view freud believed that death frees the go from attachment to the diseased and allowed the individual to form new attachments attachment theory by bolby was an attempt to revise the psychoanalytic theory given by freud this theory has played a huge role in developing an understanding about the grief and loss elizabeth kubler ross in 1969 gave the stages of grief in her book on death and dying the stages are denial and isolation anger bargaining depression acceptance an eclectic approach to understanding and familiarizing ourselves more intimately with death could vastly help us clear out the confusion we harbor regarding this subject we acquired a deeper understanding about the indian thought about death and dying